Welcome to Official Story Time with Miss Anna. Today we're going to be reading Prince Rivet, written by Jonathan Emmett, illustrated by Pauli Bernatet. Let's see what the book is all about. The Princess and the Frog Prince got married and lived happily ever after, read Princess Arabella, closing the book with a satisfied sigh. Prince Lucinda frowned. That silly girl treated that frog prince so badly. She was lucky he married her. If I ever met a talking frog, I wouldn't make that same mistake, agreed Arabella. Princess Martha rolled her eyes. She liked facts more than fairy tales and read frogs more than enchanted ones. She heard a real frog croaking in the royal pond many times but she could never spot him. He's a clever little thing, thought Martha. Martha was right. The frog was very clever indeed. He often listened in on the sister stories, and the more he heard of princes and princesses, the more he longed to live like them. The frog dreamed of sleeping in a soft bed, eating fine foods, and wearing a beautiful crown. And he just come up with a cunning plan to make his dream come true. Yuck! Go away, you shiny, slimy beast! shrieked Arabella and Lucinda as the frog popped up in front of them. The frog did not go away. Instead, he cleared his throat and spoke. <clears throat> Allow me to introduce myself, said the sly frog. My name is Prince Rivet. Arabella and Lucinda stared, open mouth, but Martha was delighted. It's the frog, she shouted, a talking frog. Actually, I am an enchanted prince, he said. A jealous wizard turned me into a frog because I was so astonishing handsome. If only there was a way to break the spell. Well, there is, cried Lucinda. It's in this book. You just need to be looked after by a pretty princess like me. Or a pretty princess like me, said Arabella. And then you'll turn back into your old astonishingly handsome self and we can live happily ever after. Lucinda and Arabella took Prince Rivet back to the palace and gave him whatever he wanted. Lucinda let him sleep on her pillow while Arabella let him eat from her plate. But the more Princess Martha saw of the frog, the more suspicious she became. Why are you making such a fuss of him? She asked as Prince Rivet hopped around the dinner table. Because he's an enchanted prince, said Arabella, and that's how you break the spell. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, said Martha. And with that, she went to the royal library to look up the truth about frogs. A mother frog laid eggs, she explained to her sisters. Then the eggs turned into tadpoles, and the tadpoles turned into frogs. But frogs don't ever turn into princes. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, replied her sisters. So Lucinda and Arabella continued to pamper Prince Rivet. They let him sleep in the biggest, softest bed. and gave him the finest clothing and a beautiful new crown. Martha was the only person who saw Prince Rivet for what he really was. You may be clever, but you're just an ordinary frog, she insisted. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, said Prince Rivet. This is hopeless, thought Martha. My sisters will never believe me, no matter how many books or facts I show them. But I suppose I'm just as stubborn. I've never read their storybooks. Perhaps I should. So Martha gathered a big pile of fairy tales and began to read. She was surprised to find that, while the stories might not be true, they were often funny, exciting, and inspiring. And after Martha had read them all, 
she knew exactly what to do with Prince Rivet. If you're really an enchanted prince, why hasn't the spell been broken yet? Martha asked Prince Rivet the next morning. Prince Rivet shifted uneasily in his little golden throne and adjusted his little golden crown. Mm, perhaps it's because I'm not being treated well enough, he suggested. You seem very well treated to me, said Martha. I think it's time to try something different. What's the one thing that will always break an evil spell? True, love's kiss, cried Arabella and Lucinda. Me first, said Arabella, planting a big wet smacker on Prince Rivet's clammy cheek. You don't love him as much as I do, said Princess Lucinda, snatching the frog from her sister and squashing him, facing a passionate smoosh. But no matter how many kisses they gave him, Prince Rivet remained very much a frog. And in the end, both princesses realized that this was all he ever been and all he ever be. I suppose I should go back to my pond, sighed the frog, taking off his beautiful crown. But he looked so sad that Martha couldn't help feeling sorry for him. Please don't go, she said. Any animal smart enough to fool my sisters will be fun to have around. And while I might not want a handsome prince as a husband, I'd love to have a clever frog as a friend. She picked up the frog and gave him a gentle kiss. The instant Martha kissed him, a huge puff of pink smoke appeared, and the frog turned into a handsome young prince. In fact, he was so handsome that Martha decided that she did want to marry him after all. So she fell into his arms and they both lived happily ever after. And if that's not the ending you were expecting, then remember. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Bye.